For this project, we're going to tackle building a skeleton for a large team's knowledge base. In this scenario, you're responsible for implementing the Notion rollout at your company and building out the information architecture from scratch. Setting the stage, let's meet your hypothetical company. It's a tech company called Acme Inc., and they sell a software product with frequent product launches. There are 1,000 employees spread across three main departments, go-to-market, engineering, and foundation, with a few layers of sub-teams under each department. You'll be introducing your knowledge base structure to everyone across the go-to-market teams and want to make it so that team members can add information to their knowledge base pages as needed. With that, let's get into the build. Start in the default general team space and create pages that are relevant to all stakeholders. We'll do this with templates. We'll add a docs database, a meeting notes database, and a company homepage. Next up, we can create team spaces for the largest functional groups that make sense for your organization. There are many different approaches depending on how your organization wants to segment information. In the case of Acme, with only three departments, it may not make sense to have one go-to-market team space with more than 300 people. At the same time, a team like content marketing with only seven people is too small to justify its own team space. A happy medium here is to create team spaces for each sub-team within go-to-market. Customer success, customer experience, marketing, and sales. To do this, we'll just navigate to the Create New Team Spaces option and give it a name, description, and icon, starting with customer success. When creating these team spaces, we'll of course need to think about permissions. First, consider whether a team space should be open, closed, or private. We always recommend defaulting to open team spaces, especially for a simple structure. For an ad hoc team space, like for a project or hiring, you might want to consider other options. Once your team space is created, it's time to add people. I'll do this using groups, which have been provisioned via Skim. TeamSpace owners will have a different set of permissions than TeamSpace members, so we'll want to decide which people should have that specific role. In our case, we'll make all of the functional leads TeamSpace owners, and we'll make sure that we've added the whole customer success team as a group. For any additional TeamSpaces, you can follow the same process. Just make sure that you've pre-configured your user groups via Skim. We learned that within each team space, we'll want a home page, as well as a top level page for each sub team. So we can go ahead and create those as well. When it comes to provisioning page content, remember that the default permissions are inherited from the team space, and you can change access levels for the individual page. Let's look at an example of a place where we might want to change the default permissions, and we'll break down that process. On the company goals page in the general team space, we might want to give view only access to everyone at Acme. This will prevent accidental changes. We'll go to the share menu and restrict the page, giving everyone at Acme view only access. Any of the subpages would inherit the restriction as well. Then we can go in and add just the manager group as editors. Similarly, you might want to give sub teams full access to their nested pages. So we'll give the team full access to their page and all of its sub pages by inviting them as a group. This structure is only the start of a successful Notion implementation. Combine it with clear communication and encourage active participation from your team members to continuously update and improve the content. <laughs>